Good afternoon, and welcome to episode 893. Topic today is how committed are you to relationship? Yes, commitment and relationship. We put those two together for you, and not just the way you think. I'll get into that in a moment. Before I jump into all that discussion, let me introduce, my, let me introduce myself and what I'm about, so you know why you might want to watch this talk and why I can help you. My name is Barry Selby, in case you didn't see that already on the broadcast. I am an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, and the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover. I help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is what informs my work and also what started these talks, inspired these talks, in fact, almost three years ago, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And today we're talking about episode number 893. Yes, going to hit 900 in seven days. Wow. So before Thanksgiving, <laughs> that's a whole other topic. Anyway, um, the topic today is about commitment and relationship, as in how committed are you to relationship? And I don't necessarily mean that about how committed you are to be in a relationship with somebody and how much is your commitment in that relationship. I'm actually talking about something deeper than that. Well, higher, deep, different from that. So first of all, yes, are you committed in your search, seeking, desire for a relationship? If you're single, let me ask you. Let me preface that first. If you're single, how committed are you to seeking that relationship? How desire? How committed are you to finding that relationship? Are you committed but unattached? Are you committed and attached? Because that's different, by the way. There's actually I'm realizing there's about five talks in here. I'm giving. <laughs> let me give you a couple of pieces with it. What I want to speak to is a different piece of that. But let me drop some questions for you to think about, because if some of these provoke stuff, you may want to reach out to me for support. So first of all, are you committed to if you're single, are you committed for a relationship committed to getting a relationship, but doing it from a place of detachment? Because if you're not, that's going to get you in trouble. That's one little teaching. Secondly, if you're in a relationship, how committed are you to yourself and your partner? Oh, that's the next piece. Okay, I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm seeing this frame structure sort of forming itself in front of me and I, I know where I'm going to go but I'm not sure how I'm going to get to that place. So let me give you a few more pieces of the puzzle, some more questions to play with. In relationship, how committed are you to the partnership? Now that's different from committed to the other person. And this is where I'm going to start. Yeah, this is where, okay, now, now I'm seeing where I'm going. Okay. <laughs> You haven't seen my talks before? This happens a lot where I don't always have a plan of where I'm going and it comes through the way it comes through. This one I had a plan to talk about and I wasn't sure I was going to get there. Now I'm seeing the path. So, how committed are you to the partnership rather than your partner? Because that's a different level of integrity, a different level of a commitment, and a different level of partnership that frankly is a bit of a higher level than just being committed to your partner. There are plenty of people I know, plenty of people, in fact, who are committed to their partner out of a place of codependency. And I'm not going to go down that path too much because I've talked about it many times before. And if you have an issue with codependency, reach out to me, I can help you with that. Break that cycle once and for all. Well, it may take more than once, but we'll get it there. So the idea about being committed to the partnership rather than committed to your partner means that you're committed to the idea of what you are together, which is not codependency. It's actually more of interdependency because it creates a different spectrum of relationship. When you understand that your commitment is to the partnership, not to your partner, or I should say commitment to your partnership before your commitment to your partner, it's a much healthier place to come from when you're looking for a relationship. Because what you're focusing on is not finding that person, but finding that experience, finding that relationship that you can embrace and enjoy and be part of that you wanted to have in your life. And the person that fits into that is the ideal person, but it's not the person you need to have to make the relationship work. This may be complicated, it doesn't seem to make sense. What I'm speaking to primarily is focusing on the greater good, the, the, unif the, um, the union of the two people, you and your partner, rather than be focused on the other person alone. Because some of the problems people have in a relationship when they're committed is they don't commit to themselves. And when you commit to the partnership, you're committing to the structure that's there and two partners involved, you and the other person. There are, again, many people fall in the codependent trap of being committed to their other, the other person, but not committed to themselves. So they keep giving, 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 giving till they're drained. I've been there. Have you? Not fun. On the other side of the coin is there are people who are so uncommitted to their relationship as a partnership that they hold back on what they can give. They're not expressing their full willingness. They're not being totally committed and both feet in. They've got one foot in, one foot out. 
I've been there as well. Have you? <laughs> I guess I'm speaking maybe just about myself, but I think there's more people out there who know what I'm talking about here. So the idea about commitment in a relationship is to really come to a place and be in a place where you absolutely understand that the relationship is a container for both of you to play in. And it's the commitment you both bring to the relationship that allows each other to blossom and bloom. In fact, my, in my perspective, the ideal relationship is one where both partners are committed to the partnership they've created first and committed to the commitment to themselves and to each other second and third alternating because I realized there's a, there's a, I was trying to find if it's going to be equal or not. It's not. But you're not committed to the other person before yourself and you're not committed to yourself over the other person all the time. It's a fluctuation. It's a variable. So just keep that in mind. So what I'm speaking to here is about commitment to a greater place than just yourself, first of all, because relationships are about two people and the, the sum of the two people, not just yourself. At the same time, commitment is not to having the other person save you and make, them, make you feel better. The dance of relationship is two partners committed to the relationship, the partnership, as I said. So for me, commitment is about, can you be, hi, Daniel. I'm glad you're feeling better, by the way. Um, it's that commitment to each other but it's also the commitment to the partnership as a whole. And a healthy relationship is definitely focused on the meeting in the middle, the partnership together, versus one trying to commit to the other person and not taking care of themselves. So my, um, the questions I gave to you earlier, the question I'm giving to you now is how can you stay true to yourself in a healthy, fulfilling and rich relationship unless you commit yourself to it? So, hello, good to see you too. Um, and by the way, it's a Facebook Live in case you're watching on YouTube, because I do put them on YouTube after I finish my Facebook Live. And I see all about those links at the back end of the broadcast, so stay tuned for that, in case you didn't know. So, in my work with clients, what I'm really clear about is, first of all, I've got to get them to commit to themselves. Yes, when you're single, you commit to yourself. Commitment's not just save a relationship. So when you commit to yourself, you start to step up in your own um, self-support, your self-respect, your self-regard, your self-confidence so that you really own who you are which makes you one more attractive to a relationship which is awesome but secondly more fully embodied and fully embracing yourself so when you're in a relationship you don't give that up as i said i don't think it's just me that did this in a relationship where i give myself up for the partnership i, I would sacrifice myself for my partner trying to make them happy all the time and not taking care of myself of course you've never had the experience yourself have you no of course not but <laughs> unless of course you have but my, my understanding here, my learning and what I've d done for the last 20 years learning this path is learning how self-support, self-commitment is the only way to be in a healthy relationship with somebody else. I've talked, as I said, many times at length in my previous broadcast about the trap of codependency. This is one of the biggest ways out of that is when you commit to yourself and you create a, um, it's not a structure, but you, commit, you create a resource in yourself which is solely self-supportive. Now, it doesn't mean you're not being romantic, doesn't mean you're not going to have a great relationship, doesn't mean your partner's going to be amazing, and all that sort of stuff. In fact, it makes all of those better because you commit to yourself first. When you are committed to yourself first and your partner's also committed to themselves first, I was going to say committed to you, they're committed to them first, then you bring a wholeness to the relationship. It also means that you give to each other from a place that is solid from a place that is reliable, from a place that is trustable, and basically adds to the relationship in multitudes of ways. And in fact, what happens is, when your partner loves you, ex perfect, Daniel, exa exactly, Daniel. It's very important to have your own identity and not lose it, yes. So that's the thing, is when they give to you and you're already solid and whole, there's no smothering that happens. There's also no codependency, which is again, the thing I'm looking to stamp out on the planet, so that we become whole beings. And in our relationships, our whole being is fully expressing itself in our individuality and in the relationship, as is our partner doing the same thing. Now, of course, the ideal is that you meet at the middle in terms of relationship where you're both doing the same thing, which is committing to yourselves and then committing to the relationship and to each other. And when you do that, you serve each other in the most magnificent ways because, first of all, your resource, resource state, your, res your resource inside yourself. And most people... Unfortunately, because the way society teaches us, and I fell in the trap myself, would look for a relationship for what they can get out of it. And if you're in a relationship to see what you can get out of it, you're not doing it right. Well, 
maybe doing it right in your in your limited viewpoint but you're missing the whole possibility of what's what's available to you so and it also and also you're not in a relationship to see what you can give yeah i understand contrary in this one for a second so you're not in a relationship to get you're not in a relationship to give you're in, you're in a relationship to commit to yourself and to commit to each other which means you give and receive you don't take you receive and you don't you don't give to um, exhaust you give to add but again it comes back to commitment to self because when you commit to yourself you start learning how to take care of yourself and as i said in other in other talks and why i talk about self-love so much is when you do love and care about yourself first with that commitment to yourself it makes you much more um fueled is a word i'd use i guess in a way but filled up with your own resources so you can give to your partner effortlessly being in a relationship where both partners give to each other effortlessly is a joy it's healthy, it's light, it's available, it's rich, it's deep, it's fulfilling, it's all these different things, but it's sourced in the fact that both partners are committed to themselves. I think I'm making my point clear on this one. So again, if you're single, commit to yourself first. If you're in a relationship, you can still commit to yourself while you're in that relationship, but you might discover when you commit to yourself, that relationship will may maybe change, it might even go away. So I wanna say proceed with caution, but proceed with intention. So loving yourself first, committing to yourself first is the place to have a healthy relationship if you're already in one or if you're a single. Now, if you're single, it's like, how do you do that? Well, a couple of things. When you're single committing to a relationship, excuse me, when you're a single committing to yourself so you can have a relationship, let me con conflate that in a better way, then it's the best place to be aligned to your true values. So when you're committing to yourself, you start to rediscover really who you are. You start to trust and love yourself for who you are. You also start to discover what you're worth, what your value is, because you may have ignored that for a while. You may be so externally referenced in your life as a single person that your value was based on what you saw out there. Thank you, Dan. I'm glad you love what I'm saying. Feel free to share it with your friends, especially those ones who are challenged by this, because they may want to hear this. <laughs> Thank you for that. So the recognition is that when you commit to yourself, it, it really in, involves turning the mirror on yourself to look in yourself in the mirror and see who you really are because you may have been downplaying who you are looking you need to go out there and get from other people all the time now for a lot of people they're ego driven so their ego is going to keep looking for take 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 and that's not healthy at all so i'm speaking deeper than that not to re not to kill off the ego remove the ego because we need the ego because it's like a steering wheel in the car if you don't have the steering wheel in the car you can't drive anywhere except straight lines. And so not having your ego is around is not a healthy thing. Actually, it's a really good analogy. Hmm. Your ego is a steering wheel in the car. That's an interesting, yeah, okay. I'll use that one later on, another time, for another talk. <laughs> so why I keep talking about self-love all this time for the last couple of years and why I have the self-love meditation is because of the fact when you start loving yourself, you start to build respect for yourself. And you start to have real commitment to who you are. Because if you do the practice and the self-love meditation, which I have on my website, I put the link below, is a 30-day commitment because when you do that 30-day commitment you start to really commit to yourself and when you start putting in practices whether it's that or going for walks every day or meditating every day or going to the gym every day or doing something that is consistent for yourself is another way of building or flexing or strengthening that commitment muscle so that's one way but that's that's committing to habits but i'm speaking to committing to your value and when you're single one of the best ways to commit to your own self-value is to look in yourself in the mirror. It sounds so simple. Because we're so externally referenced in most of our lives, we don't tend to look inwardly. Now, meditation is one way to do that. My self-love meditation is a combination of inner, inner calmness with looking in the mirror. It's a self-love meditation practice that we're using in the mirror. But there's other ways of doing it too. Is saying no, as I mentioned, let me preface that before I say that. I talked maybe a month or two ago about agreement keeping. When you keep your agreements and you make less of them so you can keep them, you say no more often you start to rediscover just how much power you have because a lot of us have overcommitted in our lives I don't think it's just me and said yes to things we didn't want to say yes to because we thought that would help us to feel happier or feel like we'd fit in or anything else when you say no it's another commitment to yourself because when you say no you're saying no to what might get you somewhere out there but it's going to be based on false pretenses false premises is better way of saying it and when you commit to yourself and you really do own that space and you say no, you start fueling and rebuilding your own integrity. Integrity is another aspect, by the way. I talked about a lot of self stuff in one, I've got a course I've been playing with for a while, which is right now evolved into my, my course I'm offering Sunny Friday called um, 
thrive you through the holidays, which is a real cause for people who want to go through the holidays without stress. But it's a lot more than that. It's about the self-support structures in place that I've talked about many times. So when you learn to love yourself and support yourself and trust yourself and commit to yourself and feel confident in yourself and all these different other self-reflective things, you become a magnet for that sort of thing in your life, which includes relationships. When you say no to things that don't serve you, when you say no to relationships that don't fit you, when you say no to jobs that don't serve you, you start to raise your standards. You just like you declare to the universe that you're worthy of more, that you deserve more. It can be painful to do these things. I've done it myself. And sometimes it takes a while from when you say no to when the next thing shows up to fill the gap. But when it does, you go, oh, now I know I said no in the first place. Now, I'm not going to go into a whole expose and that's a whole other teaching about that journey of tr trust and faith with spirit. That's another talk that I'll do for another time. But when you start with commitment to yourself, as I started in this talk, you'll find yourself in a better place with who you are. You create a different relationship with yourself that is healthier, that is stronger, that is trustable, and is based in integrity. So commit to yourself first before you do any relationship. If you're in a relationship and you want to do this, you can commit yourself in the relationship. At the same time, know that that might change the dynamics in the relationship. Ideally, when you commit to yourself, your partner goes, I want some of that, meaning that they want to be with you, but also they'll commit to themselves as well. Frankly, if you're watching this, have your partner watch this too, because maybe they'll get value from it as well. But when you both commit to yourselves and the relationship and each other, it just raises the vibration of the relationship to a whole other level. But you might find yourself in a relationship where you commit and the other person doesn't. That's one of those rubber band experiences I talk about in my book. The rubber band being the tension you put in a relationship, but when you don't have the same place in your life, the rubber band can break and you end up losing the relationship. That's the Cliff Notes version of that chapter, by the way. So I think I've made my point clear a few ways from Sunday. Um, if this is making sense to you, I appreciate it. If you want to share it with your friends, please do that as well. If you want to get help, I'll give you some links. You can reach out to me, get support, because for some people, this doesn't actually, they understand it, they just don't know how to do it. So that's what I specialize in. So I did mention a couple of things I could put in the comments. My self-love meditation will be in the, in, in the comments for one thing. And I did mention uh, Thriving Through the Holidays. It's my uh, two-month group immersion. Starts this Friday. You can definitely join in if you're single or coupled. Either way works. This is to help you basically have a more... Um, enjoyable journey through the holidays. <laughs> you have to work, I'll put the link in. You can read the, what's on the page about that because it talks about the stress levels. Anyway, different topic. Um, I'll put a link in the comments so you have a chat with me as well. If you're single and you want to get help, I'll put a link so you can reach out to me for support. And I invite you to look at your own life where you're committed to yourself. How you can be more aligned to your values, more aligned to your truth, more aligned to what makes you tick so that your life resonates in a way that is harmonious with who you are and then brings in people who are harmonious to that as well. I think that made my point. That'll give you something to think about. Again, if you have questions, you can reach out to me over social media. You can share it with your friends. You can discuss it. Share it with your loved ones. If you're in a relationship, maybe you want to share it with them. Um, and if you haven't seen my broadcast before, let me just quick, quick, quickly, quickly give you a recap. So I mentioned we put some of them. Yeah, okay. I'll give you the links. To, I'll put the links in the comments afterwards. You can sit, check in on those. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash Barry Selby. The replays go to my YouTube channel after they go to my business page on Facebook. And on Facebook, uh, my business page is barryselby.author, and you can watch all the replays there. Um, watch, take it back. Facebook's been annoying lately. It doesn't show every single one of my videos. It shows some of them, not all of them. However, you can watch them on my YouTube channel. Nancy, good to see you. Um, I guess you just touched down in Hawaii, I'm guessing, because you're watching, not unless you're watching on the plane. Um, so, live at 5 p.m. Pacific time, personal page, replays on business page, and also my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. Um, on there, you find a playlist called Messages for the Masculine. Please subscribe to my channel, and you can definitely, are you waiting for your friend? Cool. I love to see. I'm sure you can show videos from there and pictures from there as well. Um, so please subscribe. To my, <laughs> just split focus for a second. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is which is um, <laughs> which is um, Barry Selby on YouTube, and you can find the playlist in there called Messages for the Masculine. The thing about that is, it's easy to find on YouTube because all the titles are listed, and you can scan through all 892 of them, 893 of them, and find the keywords that stand out for you. So I recommend that. With that, I thank you for watching. Again, um, what is your commitment to yourself? And what is your commitment to a relationship? You can put comments below if you want. You can reach out to me over social media or you can click on the links I'm putting in the comments after I sign off and get support. I appreciate you being with me as always. Thank you for watching. And as always, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon.